X2, X-Men United, was directed by Brian Singer, like he directed the first one. And as well as in the first one, it also stars Hugh Jackman, Patrick Stewart, Ian McKellen, Anna Paquin, Rebecca Ramey, and James Marsden. And it is about Professor X. And when he gets kidnapped by an ex-military leader named Stryker, the X-Men must team up with Magneto and a newcomer Nightcrawler to prevent Stryker from using Professor X to destroy all mutants. Guys, welcome back to my excellent X-Men review series. Today we're reviewing the second film that was released, X-2. Now, it's not as great as the original, in case you can't tell. The movie is still pretty good, though. Let's start things off the bat by saying a negative. You know how the first one, when I said it could take a very stupid scene, like Wolverine stabbing... Rogue in the chest. I think that I said that in the first one. If I never said it, uh, another positive about the first one is that Wolverine, like, or they create a very stupid scene, but they can make it feel like it's important, like Wolverine stabbing Rogue. This one can't do that. The first one had, on a lot of scenes, had significant importance to move the story along. This one, it had that, but it just did not feel important. Like, the scene where um, Bobby's brother calls the cops, that was just stupid. To me, that it made me be like, what? Like, the first one, as much as the stupid scenes really worked for me, in the second one, the stupid scenes did not work for me. You know, let's get all my negatives out of the way. This is a spoiler review, so just turn it off right now if you don't want spoilers, because I'm about to spoil it right now. Three, two, one. Jean's Grace sacrifice was pointless. Probably because I knew she was going to get back alive again, and all that. It just felt pointless to me. Cyclops being like, gee, no, and then they're all like, oh, we gotta move on, he died. It's just all pointless and stupid. I really don't like Jean's sacrifice in this film. I don't know why. Probably it's because I knew she was gonna come back alive in the third one, so it's kind of pointless. And, yeah, spoiler alert for my next upcoming one, next Saturday, X-Men 3. I do think she's handled really well coming back alive, but her sacrifice was kind of pointless. But besides that, there are all my negatives out of the way, so we're having nothing but positives right now. Let's start things off, and it's a decent follow-up to the original film. What do I mean by that? I mean, the first one, it was... Just this kind of low film. Like, it's kind of... It's big in the structure. How do I say this? It's big in the structure. But low, it's kind of does not feel huge. And that's another thing I really appreciate about that movie. This one... It takes it all to the extreme. So the first one, we get a meter X Men. This one, we actually get them having a big thing trying to save all mutants. And it's really... Just decent. I really like how they follow this one up. Another thing that was phenomenal was the action, actually. Um, if you guys have seen my first one, make sure to go check out my review of the first X-Men. My only negative was the action. The action, you could really tell a guy was strapped into a wire and he was going, wee, when he, they jumped. It was just all dumb. This action is really good. Some few notable scenes. The first scene with Nightcrawler, that was a great scene. And the... And the end scene where Wolverine's fighting Strikers, kind of Wolverine thing, that scene was really cool as well. The And all the other action was pretty good as well, especially in the, in the end battle scene. I really liked the end battle scene. So this film has excellent action. That's another thing that it heightens up from the original. Another great thing is the performances. Hugh Jackman, so great as Wolverine. He's got great chemistry with Anna Paquin, who's rogue. He's got great chemistry with anyone, especially Anna Paquin. Patrick Stewart, he doesn't really have that much to do in this film. He's still great. Ian McKellen, I really liked him in this film as well. James Marsden, yeah, he's good. He's a great actor, I can just tell. And Rebecca Radman, she's doing her mistake, her mistake thing. But all those things are phenomenal. These performances, they all have chemistry with each other, and that's what I love about this film. And my final 
one, I do like the story. Like I said, I like how it feels like there's bigger stakes in this one. I like, I do like what they got for Stryker's plan was to get, it all makes sense too. It's a great story to get um, Professor X to come destroy all mutants. It's just a phenomenal story, and it's expertly written, even though it cannot go expertly, expertly written, like the first one was. Anyways, that's the end of my review. Make sure to tell me down below, what did you think of X2? I'm about to give you guys my final score, because I almost forgot, again. <laughs> um, I'm going to give this film a B, an 8 out of 10, and 3.5 and stars. It definitely was not as good as the original X-Men. It could have been better, but I still really did enjoy this. Next week, I will be reviewing X-Men 3, The Last Stand, and then that'll be next Saturday. Then next Sunday, I will be ranking the original trilogy, where you can see where things stand. I'm pretty sure you can already guess what I'm going to do now. But who knows? I got very unpopular opinions. With that said, make sure to subscribe. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll always see you guys in the next one. Peace out.